That be about the lumpiest pumpkin I ever did saw. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword! Last time, we left our homeland of Skyloft! It's that far away already. Wow, just shows you how far we've come, and it's only the very beginning. But, we explored the Skyfield for... Well, technically the third time, though, but it felt like the first time, okay? We weren't bound to a bird race, or being nagged to practice for said race, or any of that crap. We were able to just explore it, see what it had to offer. We went to Bamboo Island, got in some swordplay, got some rupees, had some fun there, and then we came here to said lumpy pumpkin, and, well, we had to give the place our own personal interior decorating touch, let's just say that. This time, we, uh, have Kina here to talk to? Okay, I didn't think that was till later, but sure. Hi. Oh, look, it's the brave knight who slayed the chandelier, <laughs> still working it off, eh? Say, it's almost pumpkin picking season. I wonder how I'm gonna lift all those heavy pumpkins this year. Well, I don't mean to brag, but chandeliers aren't the only thing I'm good for slaying. And not only that, but if you want a testament of my strength, I can pick up a pumpkin with my sword, yeah. Pretty much any time that you see any sort of fruit like this, you can pick it up like that and um, just kind of carry it around with you. You do eventually let go of it if you swing your sword. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay, there, we got that out of the way. Well, um, I... want to say that I did something good, but perhaps not, um... Oh, shoot, I wanted to hearten it. Uh, yeah, okay, now I did it good. Um, see? I just was the tester of these pumpkins. I made sure that you didn't serve up a pumpkin soup that had a human heart in it. I don't think the health department would have let you keep your restaurant. See? I saved the lumpy pumpkin. Never mind that I assaulted your daughter. Um, I'm just gonna get out of here before the owner hates me even more, because, you know, I did quite literally hit on his daughter, and oh yeah, I didn't even actually say what we were doing this time. Uh, yeah, this time we are at long last going to the pillar in the sky. I knew it was something important. Just got sidetracked there for a minute. So, we're heading there. We're gonna be at long last going to the service now that we've made preparations, got lots of helpful items. We are all good to go. And now, we are clear for landing. Let's begin our travels on the surface. Oh, that view is so beautiful, and just the sense of mystery everything has to it, and how different everything looks from a color palette standpoint. It's all so pretty, and oh so cool, and... Uh, I love gray skies. I truly do. I think they're such an underappreciated beauty of the world, and this color palette is amazing. I love it. Master, please make sure you use your sailcloth when descending from high elevations. Failing to do so has a high probability of resulting in injury. I took the liberty of deploying the sailcloth for you this time. Yeah, I did not press B to deploy my sailcloth. Let it be known that every time that it tells you to use B to use your sailcloth, unless you're falling off of a cliff within the same map, you don't have to do it. Going down to the surface, don't have to. Going from the sky into Skyloft, don't have to. She always does it for you. So, no, it does not have a high probability of happening. In fact, Fi, I would say it has a 0% chance of happening. Just had to get that in there. Yeah, sorry, I just, I think it is kind of dumb though, because why would I ever use my sailcloth when using it before she would automatically do it would make us fall slower and thus take more time to reach the ground? I I'm just impatient, and yeah, I get the feeling you're getting pretty impatient with me, so let's just move on. <laughs> Master Link, we've arrived. This is the fabled surface that has long been a part of Skyloft legend. By my calculations, you are currently positioned in a location known as the Sealed Grounds. Please proceed with caution, Master. And you know it's been a long time since anyone set foot here because look at the dust on this bird statue! Do you have any idea how often people save their progress every day? Yeah, um, it's been a while. We can't even use it. 
She was saying to proceed with caution, and you might want to gawk at the scenery until you see that we have a new enemy! Oh! That blindsided me, yes, Deku Babas! They can open their jaws one or two ways. This is off to a rockin' start. Okay, let's be a little more careful. Uh, you just want to do your sword draw, make it horizontal or vertical, whichever way that their mouths are, uh, Faya, something that she wants to tell us. Master, I have information for you. I have the ability to offer information on items and creatures you target with Z. So, this is basically like the enemy bio system. If you ever want tips on fighting an enemy or something like that, she can tell you. Again, I do find this particular feature that she offers to be pretty helpful. Honestly, I don't think she's done anything too terribly offensive, at least up to this point. So, that I will give praise on. Anyway, Deku Babas. I recommend doing the sword draw as it's easy to do a perfectly horizontal or perfectly vertical slice, but alternatively, you can use a shield bash like I did there, leaving their stock completely vulnerable, and you don't have to worry about being precise whatsoever, you can just instantly kill them in that way, and it's very easy. <laughs> recommend the sword draw or the shield bash, whichever you prefer. And the winds lead us to this temple in the sealed grounds. Can't open it, but fi has got more words for us. Master, I have information to report. While these doors appear to have been opened recently, they are now sealed shut by a powerful, unidentified force. So the winds lied to us. Great. Too bad this isn't that other game where I can actually punish the winds for lying to us. So I'm gonna head over this way because... We have a new material! We are able to get... The Woodland Rhino Beetle without needing a bug net whatsoever. You can just roll into a wall that they're climbing on, they drop right off, and as long as you don't squish them, you can collect them. So that's a new material. I think we technically could have used that for some potions, but we don't have the other bugs necessary, so it's not any sort of big deal. Anyway, I guess instead we're just gonna go down here because we have nowhere else to go, and we actually are seeing a legitimate use for the sailcloth. The item that Zelda gave us is helping us in finding her. It is kind of nice. Just think of it like your ground pound in sort of 3D platformers of old, and you should know exactly what the timing of when to use it. Young one. Child of destiny. Descended from the sky. Raise the sword of the goddess skyward. Take aim at the evil aura and unleash its power. Master Link, I am sensing a change in the area that was triggered by your Skyward Strike. I have also detected an aura that correlates closely to your sailcloth. I surmise this aura belongs to Zelda. I can lead you in the direction of this aura through a process known as dowsing. Would you like me to explain this process to you? Nah. Understood, Master. See, just tell her to shut up, and she does. She's not a hard robot to please. Hold down C and- oh. You're going to tell me anyway how this process works. Okay, cool. But yeah. You hold down C, you select the target that you want to douse, and you're able to track it with your sword. 
It is a little bit weird of a way to check for objects or objects. Sorry, Zelda. I'm sorry. I swear I'm not this insensitive. I really do miss you. You are awesome and I can't wait to be reunited with you because you and Link are so cute. But yes, it is a way that you can find various people, places, or things, various nouns throughout the course of your adventure. Anyway, before we go back up to where we saw that dowsing leading us, I want to show you these walls. They should look awfully familiar to you. This is the legend that is passed down through Skyloft, yet it's etched in the walls on the surface. Hmm. Something that I didn't notice right away in my first playthrough though, but it was kind of a cool detail that I really appreciated that they took the time to do that, because it, it's kind of nice, you know, just a little extra something. I'm gonna just roll into this. I'm gonna regain my stamina when floating up anyway, so I might as well just roll like a madman, even though I didn't quite get all of it. Uh, there's ivy on the wall here. Let's uh, let's see what's up here. I don't think this leads to anywhere particularly special. At least I don't remember it doing so, but who knows? Maybe I'll learn something new. Oh, one heart. <laughs> totally worth all the stamina and time that it cost. <laughs> let's just go up again. And this is just a quick, easy way that we can get out of there. Uh, I'll see you after I'm done running my lap. Oh, um, I guess I should acknowledge the elephant in the room that we've seen up to this point. I really do love those words, though, but the two, press 2 to skip thing that's been in all the cutscenes, the reason why that's there is that I've already seen those few cutscenes, uh, and this game auto-saves if you've already watched them. So how have I already seen them if we're just playing through it now? Um, let's just say I had plans to record a lot, but the weather had other plans. Yeah. I guess the seal's weakness was being blown on. Okay, well, we can enter now. I want you to listen to this music because, oh my goodness, it's amazing. I get a kick out of this room every time. If there's one thing Skyward Sword's amazing at, it's being atmospheric. Um, on a bit of a sillier note, this is a chair. Um, we've had a few instances of these occasionally, but should you have taken damage, these will restore all of your health if you just sit down for a few seconds. It is quite nice, but I guess just kind of going back to what I was saying before, just the lighting of this place, the low camera angle, everything about it is so lovely and just... So peaceful. This is a song that I can listen to for a long time if I ever just need peace of mind or if I'm stressed out about something. I recommend it. Here we have a chest that has a revitalizing potion already in a bottle for you. Never mind that our inventory only has one slot left in it, but that is a very helpful item, especially with such a delicate shield. Having two of those things will be immensely helpful on the road ahead while you get used to the timing on guarding against enemy attacks. Ah, the Traveler descended from the clouds above. I welcome you, child of fate. Tell me, what is your name? Link? Ah, Link. Good, very good. I sensed you have already gained control over the sacred power that fills your sword when pointed skyward. The skyward strike is yours to command. It is proof that you are fit to bear the blade you carry, the goddess sword. I have sat here for many years waiting for you to arrive, all so that I could fulfill my purpose as your guide. You stand under the roof of the sealed temple, a place built by the goddess an eternity ago. Your arrival here was predestined many, many years ago. The spirit maiden you seek arrived here shortly before you, descending to this land in a shower of light. There's no doubting it. The gears of fate have begun to turn. Yet all is not as it should be. The spirit maiden was not meant to reach this land in the manner she did. I feel an evil power working in the shadows. It moves to warp the destiny of which you two are a part. Link, you are concerned for the Spirit Maiden and seek her whereabouts, yes? That is understandable, but for now you must focus on moving forward. That girl has her own purpose she must pursue, as do you. 
She set out for Faron Woods to discover that destiny for herself, and you must follow. Show me your map. The X upon your map marks the path that will lead you to Faron Woods. You will be traveling in unfamiliar land. Many monsters have settled here, and a map may not prove guidance enough for your journey. And so I will give you the power to create beacons. When a beacon is marked on your map, a column of light will stand at that location. It will act as your waypoint from afar. Point at the X and press C to place a beacon. Though you cannot see it from where we are, a beacon stands outside to guide you. Leave this temple through the front doors and see for yourself. When you no longer have a use for a beacon, you can remove it from your map by pressing C. Use your beacons well, and you will never fear getting lost. Ah. Go now. You must head to Faron Woods and chase after the Spirit Maiden, the one you call Zelda. On your way out, take the contents of that treasure chest within this room. Uh, too late for that? Um... We can just say that makes me an extra good night, right? Mm. That I got it early because you were meaning to give it to me and so I wasn't totally stealing it from you. Wow, I celebrated getting that item way too soon. <laughs> you are ready. Leave through the door before you and head into the woods. I wish you safe travel. Ah. Know that all the questions you have now will be answered in time. For now, Link, go bravely. Before we go, there is a bit of a crevice in this door, and if we look through it, you can see everything that's back here. There's some vegetation growing, there's this huge crystal, there's another really gorgeous golden ray of light shining down through a hole in the ceiling, which kind of makes me want a hole in my ceiling, but just something that you could very easily miss that I wanted to show before we moved on, because I don't like leaving this place. It's so peaceful, and this is the only place you hear this theme in the whole entire adventure. I just... <laughs> I don't want to go, but we must. We must be on our way. To greener pastures. That would be really awkward if I was being a smart aleck with that beacon and didn't actually place it where she said to. Uh, we got some birds right over here. Just gonna ignore those. And we can finally start cutting some grass. It's been long enough into our journey and we're finally at the point where we can begin cutting grass, get lots of rupees for our trouble, because why is currency of a Sky Kingdom on the ground? I guess maybe that happens when you drop your wallet, but um, we got somebody in trouble up ahead. How about we help him out? Out of the way, scram! It's a new enemy, the first of many Bokoblins we are going to be fighting. As you can see, they have blades of their own, and they can block you. It's not typical for enemies to be able to block you unless there's some kind of mini-boss or something, but these guys will. What I recommend doing, you can shield bash, leaving them wide open. What I like to do more, though, is spin attack. That'll, if I can show it, knock them on the- Oh, I didn't do it in time, crud. That c can knock them onto the ground, making it so that- if I can stop blocking onto the wrong one, please, thank you, yes. As long as their blade is not in the direction that your spin attack comes from, you are able to get an ornamental skull. That's not the most common of drops from them, wow. I can get that, but I can't get the monster claw from the keys, awesome. So yeah, they block your attacks, you want to not telegraph your movements, otherwise they will repeatedly block you. Spin attacks are your best friend, and had I not already damaged that one, I could do a finisher to instantly kill him. Two spin attacks or a spin attack and a finisher will do it, and using a spin attack will get many of them off you at the same time. Ooh, just who were those red pests? Uh, I guess you didn't listen to me explaining the enemies awkwardly while you were in trouble cowering for your life. It's okay, I would have ignored me too. Same goes for you. This is the second time I've bumped into one of your kind today. I tell you, all sorts of weird things are going on lately. I owe you big for taking care of those guys, so let me tell you something fascinating. Hey, hey bud, I'm Gorko the Goron, and I, I am researching the ancient history of these woods here. According to the ancient texts, there is some kind of place above the cla uh, above called the Isle of the Goddess, far up in the sky. Apparently, these old statues serve as landmarks to those traveling up to the sky or down from the this island Isle of the Goddess place. If you find one, be sure to examine it to keep tabs on the number of landmarks. They are quite they are rumored to be quite useful. Supposedly, this statue is special as it is said to have the ability to activate all the other statues. Mm. 
The whole thing sounds a little crazy, I know, but I for one believe it to be true. Otherwise, why would all these statues be here and all over the place? It's a real head scratcher, bud. Makes you want to know more, doesn't it? I gotta be responsible, I'm sorry. I'm so passionate about things like this, I can't just stand him up. All right, bud, you had better brace yourself because I'm about to blow your mind. So get this, people actually live on this sky island and they get around by flying on the backs of huge birds that are way bigger than the birds down here. Up there, everyone reveres the goddess and, all, and the residents of all the islands in the sky live in a perfect society, totally free of conflict or unhappiness, or gruesome for that matter. Not only that, but from what I can tell, their civilization is way, way more advanced than ours down here. But it does not even stop there, bud. This island of Isle of the Goddess has even more stuff to marvel at. The place was crafted by the goddess herself, so it figures that it is filled with wonders that we do not have here. The buildings are all made of gold. An endless spring of mystical water feeds a river through the place. One sip of that stuff and you live forever. The trees are heavy with plump fruit that cures all disease. The fields are crowded with pumpkins that never rot. Magical wildflowers bloom everywhere. And the weather, oh, the weather, bud. Not too hot, not too cold. No chance of sweaty heat in this garden paradise. That is the Isle of the Goddess. Mm. Amazing, right? Wrong! It's beyond amazing! Mm. You want to hear more about it, don't you, bud? Sir! Sure! Good to hear, bud! I'm completely obsessed with this place, I cannot get enough of it! I wish I had more to tell you now, but I will need to research these statues to learn more. Next time I bump into you, I will give you the latest info! I know how that is, buddy. Get too enthusiastic about talking about your passions, and you get too far ahead of yourself and realize, oh crap, I have nothing else left to talk about. Whoa! What in the world just happened? Did you use some kind of magic? I wish. I have a stamina meter instead. Should we take a look at Gorko? We can see that he has a sun painted on his crotch, but more so than that, we have some rather familiar looking symbols on this notepad on his belt. Just wanted to make mention of that. And I don't want to talk to you. The save button is the same as the talk button. It's a little bit awkward. Yes. Not only can you save, you can also save and quit. Okay, no, really. What I wanted to show is that you are able to go to the sky anytime that you are at one of these bird statues. Remember this, remember it well, they are a very helpful shortcut to get around the world quickly. But for now, we're just gonna exit out of that, and, um, hmm, trying to see what we got here. Uh, I don't, was this, yeah, this was the way we came from. Over this way, there's some butterflies that we can, um, violently cut in two. <laughs> kind of a nice little detail, I suppose, that they let you do that, no matter how, um, how, what word am I looking for? How... T rated it might be? I really don't know. I'm sorry, I'm kind of at a loss for words there. I don't really know what to call that. Uh, I'm sure there's an obvious term for it. Should we go up here? We can push this log down. And this will serve as a nice shortcut back to the sealed grounds anytime that we want. We see the enemies have respawned. I tried to be fancy and use a helm splitter right there, not that I needed to because he dies in one sort. Slash any. Why am I having such a hard time with these things? Like. Really? They're not that aggressive! Deku Babas really aren't that hard- what? You're Thanks, Fi. Okay. I was wanting to show that this bird statue back here is indeed the same way, and once you have found a bird statue, if I go up into the sky... Should I want to return to the sealed grounds, I am able to descend on every bird statue that I have found. So make note of where these are, make sure that you remember them well, and yeah, we can go behind the temple even though the last one we accessed was in the sealed grounds itself. But with that, we made it down to the surface, we did a tiny bit of exploring, we got a little bit caught up on what's going on down here. I think we're good for now. Next time on The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, we follow Zelda's trail into the Faron Woods. See you guys then. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am so glad that old woman bought that stool for her temple. Oh, shoot. Okay. Next to that stool, if you smash the pots, there is a fairy in there. Our first time seeing one of these.
If you bottled this, it would instantly revitalize you should you die. However, unlike other Zelda games where it's a full heal, it only replenishes six hearts. So in some cases, health potions are actually better than a fairy. Again, this is what I mean by a lot of really overpowered items being nerfed to make the less good items a lot more helpful. Anyway, now for real. See you guys then.